One of my favorite of my desert island salsas would be the salsa de molcajete. So what does that mean, salsa de molcajete? It is a roasted tomato salsa where you crush stuff in a mortar. So don't click this off if you don't have a mortar. I'm going to show you how to use a mortar, but you can also use a food processor or a blender to achieve really good results. But if you have a mortar, man, the flavors and the texture really blossom. Okay, so how do you make this roasted, tomate, uh, roasted tomato? Uh, so, so let's start with the tomatoes here. You want the ripest tomatoes that you can find. They should be red all the way through. I'm going to put them on a rimmed baking sheet because I'm going to do this under the broiler. The recipe that I'm going to attach with this video will also have the very traditional stovetop roasting that is very common throughout Mexico. Um, I've got a, one serrano chili or you could use a jalapeno. Um, I find the serranos have more uniform heat. Sometimes the jalapenos don't have any heat. And for me, this also with one is great. You may like it more with two. I've got three large cloves of garlic here, but there's still in their papery husks. So I'll lay those there. And then I've got two slices of white onion and I'm going to lay those right over here. And because I'm doing this under a broiler, I've already preheated the broiler. I've already put the shelf in at the very highest. And I'm going to slide this in. It usually takes about six or minutes or so for all of this stuff to start getting dark. And we really want it to be sort of blackened in places. Um, and then I'll go in there and turn everything over. In the second six minutes, you really have to watch the garlic and the chili because they may be done way earlier than the onion and the tomatoes, but I'll show you what they all look like. I'm just going to slide this in here and I will meet you back here when they are ready. Okay, let's take a look at all of this here. So we've got the tomatoes. Um, their skin should come right off. There will be a little... Hot. You probably want to wait until these are um, cooled down some, but you see how easy the skin comes off. And don't feel like you have to get 100% of the skin off of these guys, but you might want you might want a little of that char. Some people like that. Um, now, this garlic is the next thing that we have to peel, and it's going to be um, easy to peel just like those tomatoes were. Um, just peel that papery skin right off. It shrinks away, this, the, the clove shrinks away from the skin. Okay, so we got those guys there. Okay, now this is our Serrano chili, and I want to get the stem off of it. And we're going to go to work with this crushing in the mortar. Okay, now if you don't have a mortar, you're going to do this in a food processor. It's a little harder to do it in a blender because this is just sort of dry-ish stuff. Okay, you don't have much liquid. Um, and then this is what you're going to do if you've got a mortar. Now, you might have a mortar that is made out of granite or marble. It'll work fine. I'm using the classic Mexican mortar that is made out of basalt, a type of lava rock. And you see how incredibly easy it is to make almost a puree out of the garlic and green chili there. Now, the, one of the reasons that I always encourage everybody to do this is because the smell is just amazing on it. Roasted garlic, roasted green chili is one of the greatest things that has ever been cooked and mashed together. Okay, we've got now, and here you're really working rock against rock. So you're really, usually most uh, people in Mexico will hold this part of the mortar uh, like that so that they can really work whatever it is that they're working together in the mortar. Okay, so we've got that done there. Now with our tomatoes here, um, I, I usually like to chop them into smaller pieces. It just makes this next step go way easier. So we'll do these guys 
one at a time. Uh, you, again, using that same crushing rock against rock. Some people like to use the Roma style tomatoes for this. It makes a little bit thicker textured salsa. I think all tomatoes have their place. I'm just going to keep putting these in here and crushing them until I get them all done. This is looking and smelling really beautiful. Last thing that we have of the ingredients that are roasted, the last ones we have to put in here are the onions. Um, so I like to just chop it into small pieces. Some people would use a raw onion for this, but I'm really into these all roasted flavors. And I think that the texture goes better in this roasted tomato salsa. So let's work on that. So line those up so I can chop the pieces really small. You want to start with about a quarter of an inch thick piece here. And we'll scoop that into the salsa. Now, if you had used roasted, excuse me, if you had used the Roma tomatoes for this, it would be considerably thicker than what we're going to experience here. Grab that thing. So we'll stir those roasted onions in here. And this is the point at which you have to decide if it's the right consistency. I'm using round tomatoes and they're juicier. So I've got a really nice consistency here. I've got a few juices from the tomatoes that are still on that baking sheet. So I'll get those in there and just stir them. But if this is the right consistency for me, um, but if yours is thicker than this, you'll want to take a little bit of water to it. Okay, next thing that we're going to do is to um, taste it and give it some salt. Okay, I know kind of where I am. I'm going to say that this is going to take a scant teaspoon of salt because remember salsa is a seasoning, so you season it highly. So I will take about that much and stir that in. And then I'm going to give it another taste just to see how we are with the salt level and then judge acidity. Do we want it to be more acid? Because if we do, we can use some lime juice or some vinegar in this. Vinegar is pretty common. It seems just a tiny bit flat to me. So I am going to squeeze just a little bit of lime juice in here because I think that will perk it up. Remember, you're going for slightly salty, bold flavors. So this acid is going to be the right thing for that. And then we have one more ingredient that we can add or we don't have to add. Um, and that would be cilantro in this. And then we'll give it one final taste because I say making when making a salsa like this, it could make or break your meal. So you really do want to pay close attention to all of the seasoning. So I'm just bunching up that cilantro there and giving it a very fine slice. And I don't want too much. I want it to be quite finely chopped though, so the flavor of it is distributed all through here. But that should do the right amount for this, at least for my taste. You might like more or less. I'll scoop all of that in there. One final taste here. And you're going to have what I consider to be sort of the queen of the salsas. Good.